foundations of our young democracy are built on the belief that diversity is a source of strength. The task of leadership in such a diverse and complex society is enormous. Leadership in such complex circumstances, in my view, has four major foresight. One, to make the vision articulated in our national constitution come alive in the everyday lives of all citizens. Second, engender trust in the envisaged future and the capacity of our nation to attain it. Third, to keep hope alive when dark clouds gather. And fourth, to lead by example, by being present in the everyday lives of people. The 2007 financial meltdown has demonstrated to those still doubtful that we are inextricably linked to the global economy. The private sector needs to work with the public sector to strengthen our capacity to lead and shape those aspects of global governance that have important implications for our success and sustainable development. South Africa's post-apartheid project is in danger of becoming another tragedy. 16 years of implementation of the Reconstruction and Development Program and the Black Economic Empowerment Process to address the legacy of socioeconomic discrimination have yet to show sustainable benefits in the everyday lives of poor people in this country. The idea of a government that delivers development to poor people is at the heart of the failure to close the gap between vision and reality. The first task of leadership in the situation of unrealized potential in which we find ourselves is to acknowledge that there is a problem. All political parties that contested the 2009 elections acknowledge that we have major problems in four areas. One, education and skills training. Despite the huge budgets we allocate to those two, the outcomes are less than satisfactory. Health and HIV AIDS have reduced our life expectancy from close to 70 at the dawn of our democracy to under 50. Third, unemployment, poverty, and growing inequality has seen three million young people walking our streets and villages, not in school, not in training, not employed, and very angry. Crime and insecurity has become a source of great fear, as Adrian indicated earlier. That fear and the lack of trust in the criminal justice system is driving privatization of security by wealthy people and the resort to instant mob justice or injustice by poor communities. So these four major challenges represent a consensus about what our problems are. The missing link in all these tragic failures in our society and elsewhere in Africa is acknowledgement and mobilization of the inventiveness of ordinary people to tackle development challenges. Leadership in complex environments such as ours need to embrace the involvement of citizens in the planning and implementation of programs for their own development. Our country is in the grip of growing despair so soon after all of that euphoria of 
the Soccer World Cup. The celebration of our newfound self-confidence is giving way to fear and despair. Where are the leaders who should inspire confidence in our future? Where is the private sector leadership in the face of xenophobic attacks? Where are business leaders to join Tokyo in defending freedom of the press? The haunting echoes of apartheid's protection of information and tribunals in the national interest should rouse all citizens from the slumber we seem to have fallen into since 1994. A major difference between great leaders and the rest is being able to look beyond the dark clouds of the present moment, as well as the euphoria of small victories. Complex societies need to ride out the storms of conflicts, the disappointments of failure, and the euphoria of small victories. Success that is meaningful for the least amongst us requires a long-term view. The focus on quarterly results, the next election, or the next business deal is unlikely to yield the long-term returns that would make us realize the vision we set for ourselves as a nation. The long-term view requires transcendence of fear, which prevents many of us from standing up and being counted. The gap between our vision as a nation and the persistent and growing inequality in our midst is traceable to the distance between leaders and citizens. The divergence of interests between leaders and citizens often leads to poor quality outcomes. Leadership in complex societies requires wisdom to hold together shared goals and to forge ways of being and doing that demonstrate congruence between the personal, the professional, and the political. The tragedy of the commons is not inevitable in complex societies. Trust building in society requires social compacts that foster robust governance rules to align interests and to develop shared goals that are negotiated and mutually agreed. Mobilizing the energy and inventiveness of ordinary people and civil society groups is key to success in tackling complex problems. Africa's greatest assets are its people, yet too little attention is paid to enhancing this asset. South Africa has the potential to demonstrate to ourselves and to the world, as we did during the Soccer World Cup, that we can work together, the government, the private sector, and civil society, to realize our dreams of greatness as a proud member of the family of nations. I thank you very much.